deal with airplane peanuts. Comics comic is a term a lot of comedians use to describe some of their peers. And right, here we go. Let's get into my guest today. He's a comics comic. Uh, every comic respects this guy. He is a comedian's comedian. He really is a one of a kind act. He's a very yeah. funny comedian. He's a comics comic. I say this again. Yes. Please watch it. A true yeah. comics comic. But what does that phrase really mean? For some, it's the ultimate honor and a nod to their ability to make even the world's best comedians cackle with laughter. But the phrase itself can sometimes feel like a double-edged sword, carrying the negative connotation that these comics are underachieving in some way given their tremendous level of talent. It's common to hear this title thrown around for guys like David Tell, Brian Holtzman, and even Patrice O'Neill. But when you ask a few of the biggest comedians in the industry, a different name comes to mind. Louis Katz may not be a name you've heard much of yet, but most comedians certainly have. Unfortunately, there's a long history of elite joke writers who receive the utmost respect and admiration from their peers, but never never seemed to garner that same level of notoriety on the public level. And until recently, there was very little you could do as a comedian in those shoes. With all the typical industry gatekeeping and limited television spots, it's almost always been impossible to take control of your own career. But with the rise in popularity of YouTube specials, online stand-up clips, and the comedy business as a whole, new avenues have begun to emerge for comedians to expand their careers completely on their own. And after titling his latest hour special, The Best Comedian You've Never Heard Of, Louis Louis Katz is a great example. Lou, you're often called a comics comic. We hear that term a lot in the comedy industry, but what does that term mean to you? A funny guy who can't sell tickets. That's what <laughs> it means to me. But no, it's a it's a it's a compliment. If you know, comics are the toughest judge. Com comedians see the most comedy, you know, and uh, and I do feel like my peers respect me and enjoy my work, and that means the world to me that they that they they dig my stuff. Well, speaking of your peers, that goes perfectly into our next question. David Tells called you one of the best joke writers working today. Ali Wong says you're one of the funniest and most prolific comedians she's ever known. And with such high praise from all-time greats in your industry, along with your obvious comedic talent, how do you think you became, as you said, quote, the best comedian we've never heard of? By a... Uh... Uh, a refusal to to really do the social media thing until like last <laughs> year. I think I kind of, I was on there for a while. I got in like one minor argument with somebody and I was like, I'm out. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and it was a huge mistake. I've watched people just pass me by because they're just, they're playing the game. I didn't want to play it. And I'm finally kind of playing the game and it's already working out great. You know, I still don't have a podcast, but the YouTube special is doing great. And I'm posting on on, uh, on the other socials clips and stuff. And, and it seems to be catching on. I'm just old enough that it's like, um, hard for me to do social media. It's not like just a natural thing. And not that, yeah. not that it's an excuse. There's plenty of people my age and older who have managed to rank, you know, deal with it and and blow up from it but it just it's been tough for me i believe in things like privacy and a lack of shame well speaking of getting involved into this new age in the social media realm you have multiple half hours on comedy central and you've released stand-up albums but a month ago was your first youtube special what was the decision making process that led you to youtube have you enjoyed releasing your content this way overall getting involved in this world as you're saying and do you think the releasing of independent specials can help bring more talent to the public eye that's great questions um there's few of them there. Let me try and get them all. Well, first of all, the choice to go to YouTube was really centered on the fact that Netflix said no. So that meant uh, YouTube was the place to go. Uh, I've been excited to go on there. And honestly, in uh, in retrospect, I don't think the special would have worked on Netflix. I didn't realize it because it's the theme of the special is all very organic. That's This is really things that I'm going through. But the fact that it's on YouTube, I think actually works for it. It makes sense. Yes, I'm, I'm talking a little bit about my struggle and it's on YouTube. So that, you yeah. know, kind of makes sense that it's on there. And I think it's great that everyone's doing their own special, that we all have access. That being said, I don't know if comedians can just keep spending all of our money for very little return year after year. I don't, I don't, what's the end game for me? Instead of making like, you know, six figures for these specials is what people were making. We are now losing like tens of thousands of dollars. I don't know how we can, how long that can go on, but right. I'm, I'm very happy for the opportunity and, and the and the feedback's been amazing. You know, you you hear that um, YouTube is just full of like, uh, uh, and honestly, like I talked like I wasn't on social media that much. YouTube, I was probably the least active on of all, everything on social. You know, I was doing shorts, but I wasn't really posting on there that much. And I had like very few subscribers before this. And you hear that the comments are going to be horrible. Don't read the comments. They're going to be horrible. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you, they've been, they've been like 95% just very kind and people seem to really like it. So it's been really amazing to get that instant feedback that I wouldn't yeah. have gotten on any other platform where I'm just seeing people comment as they watch it. And they mostly they're showing me a lot of love. So that feels great. And I guess the, the end game, just thinking about it after you said that, 
I, you know, you spend all this money to make a special. Would the re- best return be to just gather a bunch of fans that will make that money back on the road? I guess it's a little too early for you because it's only been a month to see how that's changed. But have you noticed uh, at just gigs around in your normal career, people coming up more of a pop since the special? Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, it's definitely the way the way the idea is that you make the money back through ticket sales. So, um, you know, I haven't been able to notice it yet. Um, and if you think about it, it's like I need all these people to be in one city, you know, in every city. Yeah. So even true. I've gotten, I've gotten like I'm, I'm, I'm coming up on four hundred thousand views, which is like by any measure a success on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Whether I don't know where those people are, you know? and I don't, <laughs> and I don't, and I need them all to be in certain cities on certain nights. So yeah. it's a little hard to make happen. But that being said, the cool thing is I'm instantly noticing it. Uh, I haven't done my own weekend yet. I'm, I'll be in the Creek in the Cave uh, in December, and that's when I'll, I guess, I'll kind of see. Mm-hmm. But I just went out with a tell, and like, man, a lot of people had seen the special already, which was very cool. And even, you know, it's also cool, as you said, comics comic. I've been on the road so much for the last six months. I've barely been at the cellar in New York. I went through last night. And a bunch of the other comics are like, they, they're they noticing, you know what I mean? So it's definitely made that impact where people yeah. have noticed it. And uh, and so we'll see, you know, we'll, it's it's going to take a while to see how it um, if it really affects ticket sales. Yeah, that's very exciting. So you're in New York right now, uh, New York guy right now. You've been a part of both the New York and the L.A. comedy scenes, though, in some San Francisco. What is the biggest difference between the two? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, New York is really centered on, and this is New York, L.A. I won't talk about the Bay Area, because uh, that's that's where I started, but that's a long time ago, and it's still like, it's still L.A. and New York are the two battle the big A cities. It's that LA, New York is really focused on stand-up. That's what it's about, and L.A. is, is also for people that want to work in all those other parts of the entertainment industry so i used to say that like la you can't deny that there's very famous very funny comics living in la new york has the best comedians you've never heard of and and, and, that, and now that's started to change because there's people in new york who've kind of blown up mm-hmm. but there's still a lot of people who are so good and you're like wow that guy's amazing i never heard, like still there's people that that haven't that i know around the scene that are like that i mean you can tell when you ask a comedian so if you ask a, com- a comedian in new york like what they're up to what's going on they're gonna tell you about their road work you ask a comedian in la what's going on they're gonna tell you about the other projects that they're working on they don't necessarily work the road and i'm like they are very funny comics in la but it's like also you know you talk to an la comic half the time they're like yeah i have been on stage in like four months i'm like what are you are you a com- are you, but you're a comic i mean whatever you say i don't know you know uh yeah because they're usually running these other projects and because the stage time in la is typically not that good you know unfortunately i'm gonna be spending more time out there because um my family's out there i need to help them out them out a little bit and honestly i'm nervous about this stage time you know i'm luckily i'm still gonna keep my place in, in new york and be able to come back here and work out but i don't know man it's it's there's less stage time and the quality is, is not as good. There's something about the audiences out there. I don't know, man. Honestly, I have, this is going to sound crazy because I'm from L.A. and I started in San Francisco. But I have trouble with a, a West Coast audience a lot of the time. Uh, they they can be a little bit weird, man. Yeah. They're, a little, they're a little uptight, to be honest. You're kind of an old school guy. What do you think about what's going on in Austin right now, kind of becoming a third city? I mean, I love I love all these other scenes coming up. It's always, to me, I'm so, I'm so old school that it just shocks me that these smaller towns, and Austin's a good-sized city, but can can i i don't i don't i i'm still can't wrap my mind around how much comedy people want to consume in this in yeah. the world right now it's it was so not popular when i started mm. that i still don't really understand like wow the amount of tickets that are selling everywhere is crazy you know i don't know how long austin can really support all these clubs and all these things i mean at the same time are there enough people there is it enough of a tourist destination to do that i've been to the mothership it's a very beautiful club and you know i think that's uh it's really cool but also there I feel like I love it, but there there needs to be more bigger comics coming there. They they don't they need a deeper bench, is what I would say. You know, right, either they right, got to right. bring up the, some of the locals, or some bigger people need to move there. Because you look at it, and there's like there's great comics, but it seems to be like the same few comics every week. When unless there's a big guest coming yep. through, and a lot of times there are. But I just think to run a showcase show where there's local, I mean, man, people love Joe Rogan. And they'll see Joe Rogan every night of the week. And I, and I guess, I guess he can sustain it, but it would be cool if it became, you know, truly like these other cities, any night of the week, you're seeing like six headliners, you know, which would yeah. be great. And right now it's mostly, you know, it's, it's Brian Simpson, it's Tony Hinchcliffe, it's, it's Joe Rogan and it's Ron White and hopefully Tom or Christina are in town too. You know what I mean? Uh, those, yeah. those Like the fact that I can name the comics who are going to be there at any given yeah. night, you know? So I, I think it's a beautiful club. I think he's done a lot to really make it a, a comics comedy club. Mm-hmm. And I just wish the, the, the bench was deeper and, and more comics will move out there. Those comics I mentioned, amazing comics. And you could see them. Did I mention Ron? And Ron White's there. You know, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. Like those are 
those are great comics to see all the time, but it would be cool if there was even uh, a larger community of comics to support that club, is what I would say. That's so true. Great starting five, and then they just need to fill out the rest of the roster. That that makes a lot of sense. Uh, there's so many different comedians that we've kind of talked about, different shapes and sizes, styles, and quite honestly, a bunch of different levels of talent. When it's all said and done, at the end of the day, what factors do you think elevates some comedians into that next, next level of fame? To me, it's, I mean, it's clicking with an audience somehow. I don't really know how, clearly, I don't know how that works, or I <laughs> I wouldn't have made my special about what it is, but I I, I don't know. It's it's clicking with an audience uh, in some kind of way, and I don't know. I never know what it is. You know, I, I can't say I never know what it is. There's certain comics who like. I think of it. I know you have this uh, sports uh, uh, analogy that the whole show is based on. But for me, I used to think that there's comics where man, if if I didn't I, if I'd invested in this stock, I would be like a, a millionaire by now. And like, oh, right. I, like I knew it with Nate Bargatze. I knew it, you know, I knew it with Ali Wong. Like those are my friends. And also I knew it. I saw them and I would have put a ton of money in them. And, and I knew they would blow up. And there's other people that I'm surprised they haven't blown up as much yet. Mike Vecchione, who is finally like kind of got a pop this year through Nate, through putting out a special on YouTube. But I saw him and he was like one of these comics. When I moved here, he was exactly what I'm talking about. Him and Nate were these comics that like I'd never heard of them. And they blew my mind coming from L.A. And I just think Vecchione's so funny. And yet he hasn't totally popped yet maybe he has now with his new special with the, that came out this year which got like over a million views so happy for him but there's still comics that i'm like this person is great and yet i they're not they're not getting uh the amount of love that i, I think they deserve and the other thing is that you have to realize that um as much as we want to have control and agency over our careers we don't a lot of it's just luck and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't and all we can do is really keep producing quality work but a lot of it's just luck. All right, last question for you here. Is it true that when you were nine years old, you used to write jokes and send them to The Tonight Show and that Johnny Carson actually read two of them on air? And do you remember the jokes? Uh, yes, this is this is totally true. Uh, uh, but it's a, it's a little bit, I didn't, it's not like I wrote jokes. They, um, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles. And so The Tonight Show would, uh, they would like go to a local elementary school and give them like prompts, like questions. And then they would kind of, we'd just answer the questions. And then it was like, kids do the darnest things. And they would okay. read the lines out. So it's not like I'm just submitting jokes. Like I got to make it on. The time. It's, not, it's not like that. It's not like yeah. that at all. I just, I just answered these questions and other kids did too. And they all got them on air, but none of them became professional comedians. So it's more of an interesting <laughs> factoid from my life. Yeah. And actually, you know, I found the footage the other day of him reading the jokes and I'm going to upload it shortly. So that's going to be on social media soon. Sent out some questionnaires from third grade to the sixth grade. That would be about eight to, I guess, what, 11 years old, something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. You are a father Turkey. What will you say to your wife and kids? the day before Thanksgiving, as the father turkey. I know, here's one I love, Lewis Katz. Okay, here are all your lion costumes. <laughs> Not bad. Lewis Katz, you are a turkey, what would you say to keep him getting cooked? I'll mail you a check for a million dollars. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. Any upcoming shows, any social medias that you want to plug, uh, anything at all that the people should know? Yeah, please uh, check out the special if you haven't. It's on my channel, Louis Katz Comedy. If you have checked it out, pass it along to friends. And I'd love for you guys to come out and see me. I'm doing all different jokes that are on the special. So if, you, if you've seen this special, come see me live. It's going to be totally different. Um, I'll be in Austin in the middle of December at the Creek in the Cave. And then in January, I'm going to be in uh, uh, Sacramento at the Punchline there. And then also at the Irvine Improv for a one night only at the Irvine Improv. So look at those dates. You can check them out on our website, louiscats.com. But those are my uh, upcoming club dates that I'm doing. And uh, yeah, come out and see me. It's all new jokes. Because Louis was generous enough to come on our show for an interview, I think it would be fun to see if our community of comedy fans watching this video can actively spike his special in YouTube's algorithm. If you want to be part of this experiment, go to Louis Katz's channel right after this and leave a comment on the best comedian you've never heard of. Who knows, maybe Joke World subscribers can tack on another few thousand views for the ultimate comics comic. At Joke World. That's it, at Amazing. Joke World. And the world is W-R-L-D. That's a great uh, YouTube channel, Joke World. Check it out.